Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, this is lecture two, and we're going to focus on force versus distance simulations with VEDA. We're going to run through a few more examples to try to give you some uh, feeling for how VEDA works and, and uh, some of the uh, 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 simulations that you might, might find useful to perform if you're uh, taking experimental data. So we're going to talk about three topics in this lecture. Uh, we're going to we're going to show you how to simulate a force versus distance curve using a JKR model. Uh, we're going to investigate the effect of tip radius uh, in uh, an approach curve using the DMT model, and then lastly, we'll discuss the Hertz model and we'll put in capillary forces due to uh, water condensation and, and and run through a discussion of how to do that. Um, so let's do the first example, the the JKR model. Uh, what I'd like to point out is that uh, VEDA has a number of preloaded examples where all the parameters are basically set. And if you sec select these preloaded examples, the simulations are guaranteed to work. Uh, and you can then uh, test your understanding of the simulations by uh, uh, trying to interpret what you see um, uh, on the simulation screen. Um, this way you're not guessing at, at input parameters. Uh, uh, the input parameters have basically been specified uh, to, to provide reasonable output. So just to demonstrate the, um, the, this approach uh, where you use these preloaded examples, let's select under application the force distance curve as I've indicated by the red circle in this, in this slide. Uh, let's select the, uh, uh, the preloaded example uh, approaching and retracting from a sample using the JKR contact model. When you select that uh, particular preloaded example, uh, there's a variety of parameters that are already loaded into the VEDA software, so you do not have to adjust anything. You can directly go to the simulate uh, button uh, in, the, uh, in the top, uh, top uh, uh, there's four tabs across the top, so you can directly proceed to the simulate uh, tab. Press simulate, and uh, what you'll see is you'll see uh, uh, JKR approach and retract curves for the default parameters that are listed. Now, when you do these uh, uh, approach and retract curves, you'll have to do two separate simulations. First simulation, you're going to go from, let's say, plus 10 nanometers for Z to minus 5 nanometers. That will give you the approach. Then, then you have to run a second simulation in which Z ranges from minus 5 nanometers to plus 10 nanometers. That's the retract curve. Uh, you can display both uh, simulations on the, on the, uh, in the window by clicking on the All button, which is located in the bottom left of the VEDA uh, window. Uh, so it, once you click on that, uh, you'll, you should see both the approach and the retract curves. Um, you'll notice that there's a, 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 a sort of a, a, a bar located across the bottom of the, uh, the window. This bar allows you to select uh, the different simulations that you've performed in this particular uh, run. Uh, the simulations are indicated by the uh, small vertical lines, and you can position the cursor on each vertical line in order to, to highlight uh, one simulation versus the other. In this particular simulation, I actually went into the uh, software and I colored one simulation green. I colored the other simulation blue in order to uh, allow you to keep track of the approach in the, re in the retract curve. As you can clearly see, there's a, a hysteretic behavior, which is what you would predict using uh, the JKR model for contact. You can zoom in on the um, uh, jump to contact and snap to snap away from contact. You just there's a <clears throat> there's a box that you can drag and position it over the region of interest. Uh, I think you then double click and and you should then see an enlarged version. Uh, of the um, of the region of interest here, so you can you can clearly see the uh, tip jumping into contact in approach. 
you can clearly see the hysteretic behavior of the tip uh, pulling away from the substrate after retract, uh, as you retract it. Uh, clearly this hysteretic behavior has to be specified. Uh, that's automatically done for you in this simulation because you've selected the preloaded VEDA examples, but you're free to go in now and you're, uh, you can change the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, JKR parameters that will allow you to modify the retract curve uh, so again, if you're trying to explain experimental data, uh, you can you can directly compare these theoretical uh, simulations to uh, to experimental results. And so uh, this is something that, that I, I think is very useful to do. Right? It, it allows you to understand your experimental data much more uh, in much more depth than is possible just by uh, by looking at it. Um, I wanted to. Um, uh, run through an example in which we uh, uh, simulate the different tip radii. And so in this particular case, we, <clears throat> we asked you to simulate a, a substrate with the Young's modulus of 200 gigapascals. We're going to assume the DMT model for tip sample interaction. If we assume the DMT model, this implies that we've got a tip substrate interaction. And that's going to be important because we're going to change the tip radius. The tip radius directly influences the tip sample interaction force. So if you go back to the second week of lectures, you'll find formulas that show that the interaction force or the interaction potential is directly proportional to the tip radius. Uh, so in this case, we're going to do simulations. We're going to go from plus two nanometers to minus one nanometer for the DMT model. The approach and retract curves are, some, are, are identical. There's no hysteretic behavior. Uh, so uh, we, there's no reason why we would uh, want to simulate the withdrawal curve. That, that should uh, exactly match the uh, approach curve. Um, and we're going to look at uh, two different, uh, three different tip radii, 5, 10, and 50 nanometers, just to see uh, how the, um, <clears throat> the approach curve uh, varies for these different parameters. Other than these uh, these values listed in this simu in this slide, uh, we're going to use the default parameters for all of the other uh, values that Beta wants us to to input. So, um, what this plot shows is this plot shows the result of three separate simulations. In this particular plot, I'm, I've selected the cantilever deflection versus z distance. This is what you would experimentally measure if you convert the output of the position-sensitive detector. If you convert that output into deflection of the cantilever in nanometers, uh, you can you can clearly see that the uh, uh, tip with a 50 nanometer uh, radius uh, has a much uh, much stronger tip substrate interaction force um, than the. Uh, tip radii with, let's say, 5 nanometers. Uh, so the, uh, the uh, attraction of the tip to the substrate as you approach the substrate towards the tip, that's clearly indicated. It's a negative going uh, uh, cantilever displacement. Uh, the jump to contact of the tip to the cantilever is also clearly observed in this slide. And the, uh, the different uh, uh, indentation regions of the of the curve are also uh, displayed um, as the linear uh, linear uh, upward sloping uh, region of Q versus Z. So this gives you some indication of, of how you would try to uh, maybe fit experimental data uh, uh, to a simulation. It clearly shows you that you have to worry about the tip radii. So not, so in addition to worrying about the tip modulus, you have to have some information about the tip radii when you do these uh, these uh, uh, comparisons between simulation and experiment. So that's just a, a simple example that that hopefully ties into some of the discussion that we had uh, earlier on in weeks one and two of the uh, uh, of this uh, part one of this course. Um, Let's see, here we're, we'd like to do another example. This is, this is an example of, of, of selecting the Hertz model for contact. 
So we recall the Hertz model is most appropriate if the tip substrate interaction potentials are negligible and if both the tip and the substrate are, are hard. So the, the deformation is, uh, is specified by the Hertz model rather than uh, 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 the DMT. Um, in this particular case, we select a spring constant of about a half newton per meter. We're going to perform uh, force versus distance simulations starting from plus five nanometers uh, until the, to a, a Z distance of minus two nanometers. We're going to include the capillary force. So we're going to, there's a model in VEDA which includes the capillary force interaction between the tip and the substrate. To use this, uh, inter, this capillary model, you have to uh, specify the pull-off distance, D, uh, between the tip and the substrate. So in this case, we're going to just pick a, a D separation of 0.6 nanometers. And we also have to specify how much energy is dissipated when the tip uh, pulls the neck, uh, the water neck, between uh, the tip and the substrate. So in this case, we're just going to select two parameters, one and two EV, to characterize this dissipation energy um, and uh, see what the results of the simulation show. Uh, all the other parameters in VEDA, we, we just uh, select the default values that are provided to you when, when you bring VEDA up. So um, everything else is default parameters. We're just entering in two or three uh, uh, parameters to run these simulations. Uh, just to be clear, I, I do the uh, echo input file in which I show you the, uh, the parameters that we used when these simulations were run. In this, in this particular case, the cantilever was chosen. They have a spring constant of 5 newtons per meter. Clearly, you could, you could fit that. You could select that value to any, any value you want that, that matches your experimental data. Um, Tip radius uh, here was selected to be 10 nano, nanometers. I think that's the default value. Um, wanted to call your attention to the capillary adhesion input parameters. Uh, so because we're, we're including the effect of a capillary, uh, the capillary uh, 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 um, line in the input, echo input file, that, that is marked as true which indicates it's, it's active, it's included. Uh, the liftoff force is D, that's 0.6 nanometers. Uh, in this particular case, we're simulating a one electron volt uh, energy dissipation. Uh, the sample substrate uh, modulus is selected to be 500 gigapascals as indicated in this particular slide. And uh, the approach, uh, the limits for the approach is uh, minus two nanometers to plus five nanometers, that's also uh, evident in this input file. So if you want to do this simulation on your own, I suggest you print out this input file and compare it uh, to, your, to your input file. If, if these parameters match, uh, then we're doing the exact same simulation and the results you get should match the uh, results that are indicated in the next few slides here. <clears throat> so um, let's do um, uh, let's do the simulation once all these parameters are set. In this particular case, uh, I've done simulation um, of approach, uh, and then I've also done two simulations upon retraction. The two simulations upon retraction are for the 1 EV and the 2 EV dissipation. You can see that there's, a, there's about a factor of two difference in the area enclosed by this uh, triangular region uh, that defines the difference between the approach and the, and the retrace curve. Uh, this factor of two in, a, in area is, uh, is just an indication that twice as much energy has been dissipated in the, uh, in the blue curve as opposed to the, uh, to the red curve in this, in this particular plot. You can see again I've selected by, by, the, uh, by the result tab you can see that I'm plotting the, uh, the um, tip sample interaction force. In this case, I'm not plotting the deflection of the cantilever. I've, I've straight away selected the interaction force, so that's in nanonewtons, and I'm plotting that versus the, 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 the uh, Z distance approach as I uh, 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 approach the substrate to the tip. 
So this is the force versus Z, not the deflection of the cantilever versus Z. The deflection of the cantilever Q has been multiplied by K in order to get the force plotted on the y-axis of this scale. And VEDA does all that for you automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, in this case, uh, I've selected the uh, cantilever deflection uh, versus Z. Um, and and th so this is more useful for comparing your, your, your experimental results to a simulation. I ask the question, how much does the observed cantilever deflection depend on the elastic modulus of the sample? Uh, so this is the approach curve. Uh, I also include in this simulation an infinitely hard sample. That's the, the curve uh, labeled by the 500 gigapascal uh, 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 label. Uh, so in the, f in the case of a substrate with a 500 gigapascal modulus, the indentation of the tip is, is essentially negligible. <clears throat> and you can see that from 500 gigapascal down to about 5 gigapascal sample modulus, uh, there's not much uh, um, uh, difference in cantilever deflection on the elastic. There's not much of a dependence of the cantilever deflection on the elastic modulus of the sample. So if you're trying to match the elastic modulus of a sample, uh, in, the, in that elastic modulus ranges between roughly 5 and 500 gigapascals, you're going to have a very hard time doing it uh, with the uh, particular uh, uh, example that I've, I've drawn here. Um, so once your substrate modulus starts to drop below 5 gigapascals, then you start to pick up some sensitivity uh, to uh, cantilever deflection versus Z. And that's indicated by the green curve on this slide. So you can you can you can start to look at these things in a in a theoretical way. Um, the simulations only take a few minutes, so it's pretty it's a very useful uh, 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 way to try to understand experimental data and try to plan an experiment before you actually go into an AFM and and, and do and do the experiment. <clears throat> Uh, on the next plot, uh, I just show uh, the uh, indentation versus Z. Uh, this is this sort of reinforce, reinforces the previous slide. Uh, you can see that for the 500 gigapascal sample, uh, the indentation is essentially zero. Uh, for the 5 gigapascal sample, the indentation is definitely not zero, but it's only on the order of a couple tenths of a nanometer. So you're going to have to make very, uh, very accurate measurements if you're going to try to distinguish between a 500 gigapascal and a 5 gigapascal modulus for the substrate. On the other hand, once the modulus is, is on the order of 1 gigapascal, uh, the, uh, the indentations are on the order of a half, uh, half a nanometer or so. Uh, this starts to become a little bit easier to measure. And, and so uh, your, your ability to discriminate between uh, the elastic modulus of a sample based on the uh, indentation plots uh, improves. So these are just some, some, uh, some simple examples that, that um, try to illustrate to you the sorts of questions you can answer using beta. These examples have focused largely on force versus distance curves. Um, in the next lecture, we're going to uh, switch and start to focus more on contact mode scanning. Uh, so we're going to try to interpret, the, um, or we're going to try to predict experimental uh, observations of, of how the tip behaves when the tip uh, is rastered over a, a substrate that has a particular uh, geometric feature in it. So come on back for lecture three, and we'll discuss uh, contact mode scanning and, and what beta simulations can, uh, can teach you about that uh, particular experiment.